This is going to be a study of Psalms chapter 14. So let's look at Psalms chapter 14 and verse 1. It says, To the chief musician, a psalm of David, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. I believe this is one of the most powerful verses in the Bible. It shows us that no matter how smart someone is, how intelligent and and how if they have all the answers, if they seem wiser than everyone else, if they deny God, they are a fool. And it's no doubt that many atheists come off as extremely smart, intelligent people, but atheism is a heart problem and not an intellect problem. The problem is with their heart. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. You see, many men who seem to be geniuses even, much smarter than I ever thought about being, and yet they are a fool because they don't even believe God exists. You may see people who believe in a God. Maybe they believe in a God but don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. They may be extremely smart and yet they are a fool because they deny the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't believe Jesus Christ is God, then you have the wrong God. You wouldn't have the God the Bible describes because the Father himself said that Jesus Christ is God in verses like Hebrews 1.8. So the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. It's a heart problem. And then Psalms 14, 1 says, they are corrupt. When a man has the wrong God or his God is himself, he will turn out crooked in some way. He will turn out perverted in some way. Also notice it says they have done abominable works. And it's no different today because atheists are busy workers. There are a lot of hard-working atheists. The problem is that they are what the Bible would call evil workers. You can see their abominable works at bookstores. Uh, you see books like The God Delusion. You can see movies like Zeitgeist. You can see their works on TV like Real Time with Bill Maher. You can see the works of Bill Nye. They are busy for the devil and they don't even believe he exists. They're busy fighting a God that they don't even believe exists. The verse said, There is none that doeth good. That's true for every person outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, the context was the fool who doesn't believe in God. That's the context. is the fools who don't believe in God. There is none that doeth good. Even the good things he does aren't good. This is because if he is an atheist, then God doesn't get any glory from the good that he does do. Now, Psalms 14, 2, The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. Notice that God has to look down from heaven on these people. They are all under his feet. They are nothing but grasshoppers to him. As it says in Isaiah 40, 22, it is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers. All these big shot, smart people who think that they know everything, they think they deny God, they think they're more righteous than God, God's looking on them like they're just little grasshoppers. Hebrews 4.13, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. God can see right into the atheist's living room and into their heart where he can see inside they are just scared children trying to convince themselves that God doesn't exist. And God is looking down to see if there is any that understand and seek him. As it says there in Psalms 14 too, Have you ever been around someone and you think to yourself, they just don't get it, they don't understand. They don't understand that death could strike at any moment. They don't understand that God is a consuming fire. They don't understand that education without salvation is damnation. You see all these smart people who may be conservative and have moral views in some ways, but they haven't believed on Jesus Christ. All they have is the 
wisdom of this world. And when it comes to, you know, being an uneducated redneck, you're better off to be an uneducated redneck to, who has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ than to be a really smart, educated person who hasn't believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. For example, in Acts 4.13, it says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Many of the disciples were unlearned and ignorant men. Yet they have something that the great minds of this world don't have, and that is that they had been with Jesus. Do you really think all the knowledge that you have compiled impresses God? God has just infinite, infinite amount of knowledge. Think about it like this. Are you impressed if one ant is smarter than another ant? I mean, to you, all ants are pretty dumb. I mean, they're pretty smart for an ant, but I mean, when you think about it, they're, they're pretty dumb. And God is more superior to you than you are to the ant. Your knowledge doesn't impress God. He has so much more knowledge than you that your knowledge is not going to impress him. The smartest person who ever lived, his knowledge is not going to impress him. God is looking for someone who understands and seeks him. The atheist is not seeking God. He's seeking ways to disprove God so that he can be his own God. He's like an animal. He is only concerned with food, with pleasure, money, clothes, and any type of material things and self-preservation. It is to the point that they are trying to invent ways to live forever without God. They don't believe in God. Uh, they don't want to believe in God and get saved and one day get a glorified body. So they're trying to, in to invent ways to get their own glorified body here. And verse 3 in Psalms 14 says, They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. There you see it is again. There is none that doeth good. No, not one in the context of the fool who said in his heart that there is no God. It says they are all gone aside. Just because there is a way of righteousness. The Bible talks about a way of righteousness. And they have gone aside from that way. That's because in Proverbs 16, 25, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There are many well-meaning men who are really smart, but their life is just about making this present world a better place. However, the world won't get better until Jesus Christ comes back. It also says they are become filthy. The further away a man is from God, the more filthy he will become. And when a man says there isn't a God, then he will become his own final authority, his own God. And since he has a heart problem, he will be led by his own heart and do whatever is right in his own eyes. The more he sins, the worse the sin will get. The more he sins, the less the sins are going to bother him. The more he sins, the more he's going to love his sin, and then he'll want rights for his sin. Even if it's going to hurt somebody else or, or and mess up someone, else, someone else's religious rights he's going to want his rights over everybody over everything and everybody else consider men like bill maher a very famous atheist or men like seth mcflaren they're filthy their mouth reveals the filth of their heart colossians 3 8 says but now ye also put off all these anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy communication out of your mouth You'll notice that most atheists are filthy mouth. Not all of them, but the majority of the ones you see on TV. You watch that real time with Bill Maher and all that. He says uh, the F word and everything else. He doesn't care what he says. He has filthy communication. The book of Jude talks about filthy dreamers. And Paul talks about men teaching wicked things for money and says they do it for filthy lucre's sake. The more a man gets away from God and gets away from the idea of God, the more filthy he will become. Uh, many men make a living teaching people that God isn't real. They're teaching things for filthy lucre's sake. There are men who are rich 
because they're an atheist. And people are spending money to buy their stuff so that they can further convince themselves that God isn't real so that they, that way they don't have to feel bad for the bad things they're doing because then they don't have nobody to answer to. Now, verse 4, Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord? So the workers of iniquity may have a lot of knowledge when it comes to this world, but they don't have the knowledge of the truth. 2 Timothy 3, 7, Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You see all these smart people, and they have learned so much, you just can't figure out how they know so much. But they still haven't come to the knowledge of the truth. Have you ever seen someone that's so smart? Seems like a good person. Seems like they know everything. Yet they don't know which Bible's right. Uh, they don't know what the gospel is. They don't know how to be saved. They don't know the basic things of the Bible. They know so much stuff. They've never come to the knowledge of the truth. And Proverbs 1.7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. You know what atheists don't have is the fear of the Lord. And that's the beginning of knowledge. If they have all this wisdom and, and smarts in their, in their brain, yet they're not saved and they don't fear the Lord, they're really not that wise and knowledgeable. The only thing the worker of iniquity fears are the other big shots of this world, what they think about them and what they can do to them. That's the only thing they care about. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord. The workers of the iniquity will be the Antichrist henchmen in the tribulation time period. God's people will be ate up like bread and religious worship services. You can already see celebrities and big shots having mock cannibal dinners with that uh, famous celebrity witch. I forgot her name. Her name starts with an M or something. But there was a big dinner of, of big shots who ate food that was sculpted out like a human body. And these, these artists would sit under tables putting their heads in a platter pretending to be the celebrity's lunch. And you can see how they have all become filthy, as the verse said. They've all become corrupt. The further away you get from God to be your own God, the more you're going to act like some type of filthy animal. And that's how these people act. You can see all types of, of things that's, that's just coming on the scene. The cannibalism stuff. People making light of that. Obviously, the homosexuality, it's been around. Even pedophilia and bestiality, all these things, they've, they've become filthy. In the tribulation, the Antichrist and his followers are going to eat the Lord's people. In Micah 3, 2, and 3, it says, Who hate the good and love the evil, who pluck off their skin from off them, and their flesh from off their bones, who also eat the flesh of my people, and flay their skin from off them. And they break their bones and chop them in pieces, as for the pot and as flesh within the cauldron. That which hath been is that which shall be. The Antichrist and the workers of iniquity will be eating God's people in the tribulation. Uh, Psalms 14, 5 and 6, There were they in great fear, for God is in the generation of the righteous, you have shamed the counsel of the poor because the Lord is his refuge. Rich men will greatly oppress the poor in the tribulation because that is a time where to be right with God, you'll have to be broke. You know why? Because you will not be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. And if a person is right with God, he won't take the mark. So he'll automatically be broke. He won't be able to get a job. He won't be able to have a bank account. He'll be on the run. However, the Lord will be the poor man's refuge. The rich will say peace and safety until sudden destruction comes upon them. They'll have a false peace, a false safety. And then you get to verse 7, showing you the context is the second coming. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion. 
when the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people. Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Read verses like Romans 11.25 that shows you that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to restore Israel. And so all Israel shall be saved. For there shall come out of Zion deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. This is the second coming here in verse 7. This is where the Lord comes down out of the clouds to bring in his kingdom. He comes in to save Israel and give them their land. And it says, Israel shall be glad. God isn't done with Israel. It's all through the Bible. The church didn't replace Israel. People who say that have no idea what they're talking about. They have to mess with so many parts of the Bible to teach that the church replaced Israel. They have to just change or overlook or make things say something that they don't say to continuously teach that. But this has just been a quick little study on Psalms chapter 14.